So I want to show you two solid trades uh, to help you understand why penny stocks are so amazing and why it's laughable that so many experts hate on them. Uh, here's Polis B. Uh, he's one of my top most dedicated trading challenge students. He's a recent uh, student. Uh, at first, uh, before he even met me, you know, he made nearly $200,000 riding the marijuana penny stock boom. Um, and I got in a fight with his whole group, the Wolf of Weed Street. And uh, it was pretty, pretty ugly for a little bit for a few weeks uh, in March and April uh, as he was losing money. And I was warning all these marijuana people, like, listen, like, your charts look like classic pump and dumps. Get out. Like, protect yourself. Uh, I don't want you to lose everything and then be angry. Um, and, you know, the vast majority of the Wolf of Weed Street's people did not listen. And now they are mostly broke and in debt. Uh, Polis B listened. You know, he lost a lot of money before he finally was like, okay, maybe Tim is right. Um, you know, he lost uh, basically 130000 um, but he did listen and now he's on the right track and you can see he's gradually been building it back up and more importantly he's following rules not just believing in any one sector uh, a lot of people make a lot of money with one sector and their fortunes are tied to that sector and when you know it's a, a, a very volatile sector like the marijuana penny stocks you know you, you get rich and then you you go bust uh, it's very scary and Get excited for tomorrow uh, when the new Men's Journal magazine hits newsstands. The Wolf of Weed Street and I have a big uh, multi-page story. And uh, the reporter was covering the Wolf of Weed Street. And then he was covering me because he saw me fighting the Wolf of Weed Street. And, you know, I have no idea what it's going to say. It, it might be another, like, below deck where they're just ripping on me for being uh, egotistical and, and overconfident. But the fact is, is that I was 100% right warning these people. Um, you know, I made... I want to say like 50, 60,000 shorting uh, the marijuana penny stocks. I wasn't nearly as uh, as much as I should have. But again, I'm I'm not trading as big as I once did because I'm, I'm mainly just teaching. I'm glad I could save this guy. He's an awesome guy. Uh, those of you who came to my Vegas conference, you, you know I, I highlighted him. Um, but I want to talk about this trade that he just did um, the other day on SIMH because this is perhaps the best penny stock trade I've ever seen. Uh, not in terms of just money or percent gain, because, you know, it's big, but it's not like the biggest. But just the fact that anybody can do this. Uh, he risked $680 because it was already, basically already quadrupled before he bought it. Uh, and, you know, it had already gone up two cents to roughly seven or eight cents. He bought in, and most people would say, how are you crazy buying a penny stock up 400%? Well, SIMH makes thermometers, and they announced a deal to supply thermometers, so it wasn't totally crazy, all thanks to the Ebola virus. Um, and he bought it, I want to show you uh, SIMH, I'll get to my trade in a second. But he bought this, and I just went over this in a, a trading challenge webinar, so you trading challenge students, you can zone out, but he bought this somewhere in here uh, on a Friday, you know, in the in the eights. Uh, it was already up from from two cents on this contract announced earlier in the day, uh, but he bought it uh, hopefully on the on the breakout here, the late day breakout, and he held it basically overnight, Friday night and into Monday morning. And I don't know when he sold on Monday. I was shorting this at fifty one cents or forty six cents, and then I added at fifty one cents and I reshorted, um, and I didn't hold. You know, I, I made a classic mistake. I was freaked out. A lot of people thought that it was going to a dollar. Um, I didn't want to risk it. So I, you know, I lost a few thousand dollars shorting, even though it turned out to be the perfect short. But Polis B, look, look at his commentary. He said, uh, I was afraid to risk more. So he only bet $680. This is a guy who already has $100,000. So understand that he bet very small. But all of you guys with 1000 2000 3000 5000 to your name, you can use six seven hundred dollars on a trade um that is within your risk and this is the perfect kind of trade uh so he says as soon as i hit saw it hit 60 cents and dropped to 50 cents i heard my master guru tim sykes tell me to sell and take profits tim has taught me two cents to 50 cents is best case scenario for penny stocks traders got greedy looking for a dollar watch their profits disappear thanks tim sykes hashtag challenge and understand he's hearing my voice in his head okay i didn't tell him to sell i never tell anybody when to buy or sell I do video lessons like this, and my challenge students also get live webinars like I did earlier today. Uh, and you get to understand the patterns and what is good and what is bad. So in the back of his mind, he heard 
my voice in, in one of my video lessons or DVDs or webinars, you know, where I said, look, if a penny stock goes from two to 50 cents, that's pretty much near best case scenario. It could go to a dollar every now and then, but if you have 472% profits like Polis B did have on this, I'm very glad and I'm very proud that he took profits. And as you can see from SIMH now down to nine cents, he'd still be up even three days later. A lot of people are like scared, like, what if I buy a penny stock and it crashes? Well, if you buy a penny stock that's in play, which is important, uh, and has catalysts, namely this, this company won a contract, even if it's a small contract, uh, you know, it's so difficult to lose money. Uh, even buying a stock that's already up a ton. As long as you have the right catalyst and the right pattern, and Polis B had that, nailed it, and he turned $700 into roughly 5000 overnight. And that is the beauty of penny stocks. And that's why I laugh at people who say, oh, Tim, your education isn't worth it. Even if you bought all my DVDs, joined my challenge, watched all my video lessons, you know, bought stocks to trade software, if you did all of that, you're spending a few thousand dollars on education and tools. And you can make that back in one trade, as proven by Polis B. And he's on the right track. You know, he's up, I guess he got down to what, like 70,000? So he's up like 40, 45,000 in a few months using my strategy. But he's on the right track. It's not just about dollar profits. He was on the wrong track. Even though he made a lot on the marijuana penny stocks, if he had kept going down that track, he would have lost it all. You know, I want you guys getting on the right track. Now he's on the right track. He's building his account slowly. He's taking good trades like this. He traded this one better than I did. He is going to be a millionaire if he continues on this track. This is what a lot of people say. Oh, Tim, you have thousands of students and only a few millionaires. Yes, but it's more important to get people on the right track. It takes a whole bunch of effort to get them on the right track. I mean, this is like switching a, a, a train, manually switching a train and lifting it off the wrong track and putting it on the right track. So that he made 4000 this time. Another trade will make 2000 Sometimes he'll lose 500 or lose 300 But he's on the right track. And over time, you'll see his account grow exponentially, just like Tim Gratani, Michael Good, Azim John, Mark Crook, uh, you know, Riggleson, there's uh, Kuhlman. There's so many people. I met this one guy at my conference, Sebastian. He made $400,000 on one trade. I have to do a blog post on that, on PLUG, and his dad piggybacked him and made 85000 I gave him a bottle of Dom to celebrate. Freaking awesome stories if you're on the right track. You know, I was buying plug in the ones when they had good earnings. I, I, I bought 70,000 shares at 120 or 123. Again, I sold for a few thousand dollars profits. I had terrible patience, but a lot of students wrote it. And Sebastian said he held till $9 a share a few months later. And it went to like 11 or 12, and now it's back down to the fives or the sixes. But it's not hard to find the biggest penny stock winners if you know the right catalyst and the right patterns. So congrats to Sebastian. Uh, I need to talk to Sebastian more to find out the details of his trade. But, you know, $400,000 and, and pull his bees, 4000 it's all good. Uh, let me talk about my trade today. Much smaller trade, but same predictability. So all morning I was giving a, um, a, webin a live trading webinar to my trading challenge students and I was like, I'm not even going to trade. And some people were pissed. They're like, Tim, this is a live trading challenge webinar. Show us trades. I said, no, sometimes the best trade is no trade. And we were watching VSR and it was, you know, it, it was down a little um, pre-market and then it spiked a little at the open and it broke out to new highs here at 7, 780. And I gave a commentary right here at 780. And I specifically said, I said this to the whole chat room, I said this to my webinar, it was right at 780, and I said, be very careful longs. I said, I'm not shorting it because it is a technical breakout, but this breakout is very weak, okay? As I pointed out to everybody, the previous high was 670, now it goes to 770, Woohoo! Look at how many spikes it took to get a dollar a share. This is a terrible, terrible breakout. And I wasn't suggesting shorting it because, you know, it could have gone to 8 or even 850. So I'm not just shorting into the highs, but I specifically knew not to be long, and I warned everybody not to be long. Then, after the webinar got done, you know, we saw uh, it, it was dropping towards the end of my webinar at 7.20, and I was like, well, yeah, I warned you guys. Then it bounced a little, and then it had a failed bounce. And this failed bounce is very important, because right here, okay, it's, it's topped. We know that this breakout is weak, um, but now... You know, you have this kind of top here at, at 750, 750, and then the, the high here was 745, and then the high here was like 745. You have these kind of lower highs. And once it takes out this, 
the seven level, you know, where where it dropped from basically seven eighty down to seven oh five. Um, you know, seventy five cent ten ten percent drop, and then it can't bounce when it takes out this low right here at seven oh five. And it's not coincidental that that is right near it being unchanged on the day. So right around here, it's going to go red on the day. This is a great time to short because when the stock is red on the day, it can really go a lot more red, as we've seen with, with APT today. Uh, where was red? Uh, let's see. It's down 50 cents a share, so 8.30. So right around here is when it, it's going red. And these stocks, you know, you don't have true panics because they're not like blatant pump and dumps because Ebola cases can still come out at any time. But it's a huge momentum shift when they go red on the day. And so with VSR, I thought that it was going to go red on the day, but I'm not sure how much, uh, you know, it's, it's actually going to drop after it goes red. The whole question is, can it, go, can it even go red or can it even tempt going red? And so with this one, normally I say short when the stocks go red, but with these choppy stocks, uh, you know, uh, you, you kind of have to be a little early because they're so choppy. And now you see it's actually turning green on the day by five cents, right, as I'm doing this. Thank you. Thank you, VSR, for, for showing me a, a good example of why I covered. Um, I shorted this right here at 720, expecting this to take out 705. Um, and I covered here at, at around 690. I made like 30 cents a share. Nothing huge, nothing great, you know, roughly $1,500 profit on my 5,000 shares. Um, and I, you know, it, it did go down to 665, so I could have made another quarter, so another thousand. So best case scenario, I could have made like 2,500 bucks. But I took the meat of the move. I went in with a thesis. It was very low risk because the stock had already failed to bounce. And, you know, when stocks fail to bounce, that's usually a good sign to short them. Normally, again, I like to wait until it actually goes red. But this is midday. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure that it's going to finish red on the day. I just think that it's going to test it. So I went in with a very small position, and I had a very specific thesis, and I nailed it. And this is the way that I trade. You know, when there's plenty of volume, there's 19 million shares, plenty of shares to short. I looked on Interactive Brokers, there's like 750,000 shares to short. Um, so very liquid, very shortable, and just a very simple trade. Uh, you know, not risking shorting at the top, because I don't know exactly where the top is. But shorting after it has already displayed some, some weakness, going in with a thesis of what I think is going to happen, what other shorts are going to see after me, uh, and then covering and, and taking my you know $1,500 in, in very, very stress-free profits in under, I don't even know how long I held, like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Time doesn't matter. The point is I went in with a thesis. And if I had been wrong here at 720, you know, and let's say it had held 710 or 715 and, and came down, came up, you know, I would have covered right here at like 740-ish and lost 20 cents a share. I thought that there was 50 cents a share of downside, which I was proven to be right, and 20 cents of risk. Um, and, you know, normally I don't, I, I like more downside potential, but the whole sector had started to go red. You know, the momentum had shifted. Obviously, it was clearly people were disappointed that there wasn't uh, a big top or a big breakout. Um, and it was choppy, you know, you, you can always count on choppy stocks when they spike a lot to come down. And if they come down and, and can't bounce that much, then there's probably another uh, downside move coming too. So whether you want to go long on stocks like SIMH, if you see the contract early, congrats to Polis B, fantastic. If you want to short, uh, when you see some, some little uh, chart patterns like, like I see, even midday, I don't even normally trade midday, but it's just an example of a kind of trade. You know, I'm, I'm not risking that much. I go in with a very simple thesis. I find that the number one problem with people is that they're scared to trade. If you are willing to cut losses quickly and get out if the stock doesn't do what you want, you don't have to be afraid. And if you specifically take small positions, I had nothing to fear with VSR. At worst, I was going to lose a few hundred bucks or maybe a thousand bucks. At best, I was going to make, you know, 1,500 or 2,500. And I ended up making 1,500. That's a, that's a good way to trade. If you focus on these high odds trades again and again and again, where, you, you know, based on these patterns, based on previous past examples, I'm sorry, SEC, for me, past performance is indicative of future patterns. Um, experience teaches me that. I don't want to go against you, but if you risk little and focus on good trades, you can win again and again and again and grow your account exponentially, and then you're on the right track like all my millionaire students and future millionaire students. 
See you guys in the chat room. Thank you. Congrats, guys. I love it.